Yep. You impressed the win tonight. What was your overall opinion of how everything shook out? I mean, I think, you know, we, we did a great job executing the game plan. Um, I thought Jared Allen was phenomenal taking the challenge, you know, Garden, one of the best players in our game, most versatile players in our game. Um, and he accepted the challenge. You know, he was physical, he was intelligent, uh, made him work for everything. Um, and then as a group offensively, I thought we did a great job of just sharing the ball, playing together uh, and taking what was there. I think we found, you know, the pick and roll game, how it was working um, and how we could create advantages. And then everybody got involved from there. As well as, as much of a mental game as it is a physical game, and it showed that Jared could get into the head of Nicole Jokic, who's, as you said, one of the better players in the league. You also have players like Craig Porter Jr., who have that mentality to just stay focused. What is it like to know that you have a younger squad, but a more mature squad in the same way? I mean, it's comforting, you know, that you got guys out there that you can trust. Um, you know, it's it's important as a group that they trust each other. And I think that's what that maturity leads to. That maturity leads to guys understanding their position, their roles, uh, where they're going to be on the floor, how they you know, protect one another on both sides of the floor, uh, how they put each other in positions of strength offensively. So um, I think you know, the maturity is a huge thing. Um, and that's where the growth starts. You have guys who understand, uh, and that's the foundation. Back to back great games for Darius Garland and also got his backup man and, and Craig Porter Jr. doing his thing. How did you grade their performances today? I mean, I think both of them did a great job um, of just taking what was there. Um, you know, again, the, the pick and roll game was really, really good for us. It created a lot of opportunities for both those guys. Um, but I thought they both were attack minded. Um, and it wasn't just on the offensive end of the floor. Uh, I think when you're the point guard or the lead guard and you're at the front of the defense all the time, you know, the people behind you, they see you uh, and they carry your energy. So if you're not getting after it, you know, it's, it can bring the group down. But I thought both of them did a great job uh, being the head of the snake defensively, putting pressure on guys, you know, defeating screens and those types of things. Sam, uh, Sam Amico, who's fired. JB, it seemed like the tail of two halves for Jared, at least statistically. Uh, what do you think, I mean, what did he contribute there, particularly in the second half? What, I mean, the, the pick and roll game, um, you know, they changed a little bit how they were covering it and went into a deeper drop, and that allowed him to get the ball in the pocket. Um, and, you know, he's good with both hands in that pocket. And uh, I thought Darius and all the guards, the guys that were attacking, you know, once they saw that big back and that space for Jarrett, they just kept getting them the ball. So, um, you know, we've got a group of guys, again, that, you know, are learning and figuring out the game, but mostly how they can help each other. And the simplest thing, you know, that we try to get across to guys is just throw the ball to the open man. Uh, and tonight, in that second half, Jarrett was the open man quite a bit. Joe, do you – how much stock do you put in plus minus? Uh, that's an amazing number. <laughs> I haven't seen a plus 42 um, in, you know, 29 minutes. That's a heck of a number. Um, you know, we normally say the plus minus is for agents to negotiate contracts. Um, <laughs> but that's a heck of a number. And um, – I know it's only two games, but Craig Porter had quite a weekend. And then you've got depth at the guard spot uh, when everybody's healthy, which is another matter, I guess. But has he has he shown you enough to where you feel like you can trust him and, and play him, like, even if you have healthy bodies? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, that position is kind of crowded um, when you are healthy and guys are playing. You know, but what it gives you an opportunity is, like, you don't have to stretch guys out, right? Like, you can play guys – um, you know, a reasonable amount of minutes because you have a guy that you can put in. And, you know, what we've been testing is how he plays alongside Darius. So we've been able to see that these past couple games. So now he could kind of play either guard spot with those guys. So, you know, again, we do have a lot of guards and wings when we are healthy. But, um, I mean, he's proven that he's capable and he can help us. And I had, I had one bigger picture question. If you, if you go back to what happened in this – playoffs last year that that five game series and you try to gauge if your team has improved like and, and sh short up the spots that you were vulnerable in that series is how do you tell how do you know that you've done it before you actually get into a playoff series and either either win or lose like what are you looking for to say like we're tougher we're more physical we can do the things that that you got exploited on yeah, I mean, well, obviously, it's, we're like everybody. We've got to see it. Um, you know, I think that second game that we played on the back-to-back -back in New York, 
Um, I thought our guys showed it. I thought they were gritty. I thought we were, you know, the more physical team that game. Um, you know, I thought we were really, really good defensively um, as a whole, controlling the ball, taking individual challenges and those types of things. Um, but it's, it's about the consistency, right? So I think it's too early for me to jump out here and say, you know, hooray, we've done the job. Like, we have to show it to each other, you know, for the remainder of this season. Obviously, you know, you have your ups and downs, but, like, those are the things you have to see. Uh, I think, you know, one of the things that also kind of bogged us down was offensively, you know, we were so stationary, and they could shrink the floor and put their hands on us. Uh, and I think, you know, to this point pretty consistently, you know, you can see more of a flow to our offense, more guys who can move off the ball uh, and create, you know, advantages that way and then, you know, finish at the end of it with either, you know, paint attacks or catch and shoot. So I think those are the things that we'll kind of mark as we go along. Um, but, you know, it's, it's too early to say it's done, right? It's something that you have to consistently do and create the identity of that's who you are, and we're still working on that. Spencer. Spencer Davies, Cavs Insider. You kind of use the words, take what they give you. Um, but the decisiveness when the guys had the ball in their hands, it seemed like they were really quick processing tonight. How vital is that when you're trying to get an offense to work together the way it did tonight? I mean, again, I hate to oversimplify it, but like in the NBA, if you just throw the ball to the open man, good things are probably going to happen for you. Um, and you know, as easy as that sounds, like it's something that you have to continue to work on. But, you know, with the amount of guys and the threats that we have here and what they're capable of, uh, if you just throw the ball to the open man, um, it's as easy as you can make it. And then the defenses have to make tough decisions from, you know, now do I rotate? You know, how do we change the coverage? What adjustments do we make? So you know, our thing is just keep throwing the ball to the open man uh, and make it as simple as we can. And specifically the shooters, like as soon as they got the ball, they were throwing it up. Like that's something too I think that has improved as the season's gone along. Yeah, I mean, you when you know you're going to get the ball and you're going to get a shot, uh, your shot preparation is key. And I think that's what guys are starting to understand is like, you know, I know where my spots are. I know that, you know, player A can make the pass to me so, you know, I can get to my spot and when I get to my spot, I'm going to get the ball. And I think, you know, that's where the trust is being built um, is like these are not like oh no or oh wow shots, right? These are shots we've executed, we move the ball, you know, we're in position uh, and we're ready to shoot it. Chris? Kibby, what was the plan tonight against Jokic? Um, I mean, we just wanted to make it as difficult as we possibly could. Um, you know, he's so dynamic when he touches the ball that we just tried our best to not let him touch it. Um, we tried to front him all over the floor, deny him as much as we possibly can. Um, and just make it difficult. You know, he brings the ball up the floor, so obviously it puts more pressure on you. Um, but we just wanted to touch him as much as we possibly could, um, you know, and, and, you know, put him in the action on the backside, um, you know, and kind of move him around a little bit so that he just doesn't have all his energy to play offense. In past games, you were always consistent in trying to match Jared's minutes with Jokic. What is it about Jared that gives you the confidence that in some of those matchups against the premier centers in the NBA, like he's the guy that you can Again, it, it all comes down to the trust. Um, and I know, you know whatever's happening, Jared's going to give his best effort. Um, he's going to go out and you know he's going to try to execute the game plan. So on nights where it doesn't look as good, it's probably on us that the game plan wasn't real good. But Jared goes out and he competes. And like you, know, you tell Jared, do this. Like, Jared's going to go out uh, and do his best to do that. Some of these guys are really good and just have good nights, but it's not going to be from a lack of effort or execution with Jared. And then going back to Craig, something that we talked about in pregame and you touched on here in postgame, like, was there a moment throughout the course of this season early on that you saw something in him besides the fact that you desperately needed a point guard where you're like, you know what, I can go to this guy? Yeah, I mean, it, to me, honestly, honestly, it was more about summer league and training camp than it was just like a, a moment in these small periods of time. Um, you know, he is, again, you know, he is a very mature basketball player, um, and he just has a game. You know, he's not hunting or searching to figure out who he is. Like, he knows exactly who he is. Um, he knows how to get to his spots and, you know, when and how to be aggressive. So, um, you know, you just have belief and trust in a guy who always seems to be composed uh, and never over his skis. And that's how Craig has been for us since he's gotten here. Last two, Evan Dan Evan Evan Dan Riley, Dan Evo. JD, um, when the team is fully healthy, obviously not everybody's going to play. But, like, in situations like this, when you call on guys like Craig or Sam or even 
Tristan at times too. Like, how much of a of a luxury is it just to have guys one through fifteen that are or seventeen or eighteen, including two way guys that are just prepared and ready to play whenever you need them to? I mean, that's what professional sports is about. Uh, the NBA in particular I can speak on is like throughout an 82-game season, everybody's going to get an opportunity to play. Um, it's how many guys that you that you have that act professionally enough that are ready when their numbers are called. Uh, and those guys that you're talking about are the ultimate professionals. Um, you know, they take their craft extremely serious. They work their tails off. They make sure they stay in shape. Uh, they make sure they understand the system, um, you know, all those things. So, you know, when their number is called, they're ready to go. And, you know, like, the best part about them is they're competitive. Like, they want to play. Um, you know, they put a lot of pressure on me, and we have a lot of conversations about, you know, those guys wanting to get on the floor. So, um, you know, we're confident in them. Uh, their teammates are confident in them, and they have that belief in professionalism in themselves also. And I know you've been talking just about how the offensive flow is more or less guy gets an open look, gets an easy shot opportunity, but it seems like it's just been a point of emphasis in these last few games that you guys have just been getting downhill and con applying constant pressure to the basket. It's just the, the product of what you're talking about or maybe a little bit of a point of emphasis for you guys too. I mean, it's, it's definitely a point of emphasis for us, um, but, you know, I mean, like, we've always talked about being aggressive in the paint and we continue, you know, you add guys that can space the floor, which gives you room, but that doesn't mean we want to be a team that just settles. You know, the way the league is set up, where you know you're not really allowed to put your hands on people and how many guys do you know are as quick going backwards as these guys are going forward so now you're attacking 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 brings help and now the plays just become that much easier to make last one day well bring in we talked about how important it was to get on the glass and clean up the shots today was one of those days where it needed to happen to, to get the win you guys only allowed nine offensive rebounds and it played tell me how it played so much of a I mean, again, finishing possessions. You know, when you're playing against an elite offensive team like the Nuggets are, like you can't afford to give them extra opportunities. So, um, you know, you give yourself a chance, but those plays become demoralizing, right? If you give up an offensive rebound after a great stop and they finish it or they kick it out for a three, like those things can be momentum shifting, um, you know, moves. So, you know, it's extremely important for us. And we've got to continue to get better at it. You know, it can't be something that we settle on um, you know, we there's no reason why we can't be a better defensive rebounding team with the you know the guys we put out there. So it's something that we'll keep hitting our guys over the head with. Um, we've got to continue to get better at and keep working. Okay.